sort of the first part of it. When um, research shows that when parents are active in um, in, this, uh, in the kids' education, when they are on campus, when the school becomes a, a resource where people show up, um, then it, it then it starts to become a safe environment, and then it also empowers children to really feel like this is a place where they belong because their family belongs here. It's a tough thing to say that they really feel like they belong when when everyone else is shut out by a locked gate, right? Um, or when their parents have never walked into their classroom or anything like that. And so that's that's the whole idea of changing changing the philosophy. Once we can uh, once we can establish those kinds of, of workable policies, then we can see um, and we will see the, the benefit as they've shown across the country when kids are given some dignity when, ki when and teachers and, and parents um, have the tools that they need. We, the, the, the test scores, all of the measurable stuff um, goes off the charts in terms of, of, of improvements. And that's what we need. Fontana needs that. Um, it, even for the measurable numbers, but also just for the fact that we are a young community that has a majority of young people in our city. And so we are looking at education being cornerstone for the next two or three decades just because we have a majority of families who have young children um, and, and and that is that is a, actually an anomaly uh, in most cities. Just to get classes for JP or North Valley College, you can uh, go two and three years without getting all of your courses that you need to get in an associate's degree. So we need to be like thinking creatively partnerships with the high schools and the community colleges. We need to bring resources. We need to ex have, have satellite resource centers. And again, for the next 30 years, we're looking at higher education um, that the needs um, and maybe it's not higher education, maybe it's vocational training, maybe it's, and, and we need to start exploring what are the expanding things. Nobody's talking about that in terms of how our kids are going to um, uh, succeed. And succeed might just be able to be make a living, and com a comfortable living without slave wages um, and without unsafe work, without, you know, with being in safe working environments and something that really contributes to the community and to them themselves. Um, and I promise you, when people talk about career pathways, college, they are not talking about the whole person. They're talking about like education and jobs and educated people. But what that means for a community is huge if we have people who feel that they have fulfilled, that they have, they're serving some sort of purpose. Um, and those conversations aren't happening either. This is why when we talk about dignity, it doesn't happen. And this is why when we talk about parents being a part of building a community, having a school site be a joint community effort, that's why it's not happening. And when we, they, a lot of people can talk about it. And this is where I think I, I do have a unique voice, not only a parent's voice, which is not on the school board right now, but a, a unique perspective in terms of um, I've done the research, I've looked at the things that are happening across the country and what's happening here, and we can start to bring these these two things together, and we could we could create something really great. Um, my, my kids deserve it, that's what I'd want for my kids, that's what I'd want for any of our children in our community. So th those are specific, the three specific things, and people, they touch on it, 